Alright, what's up guys? How's it going? Lucas Clones here. I'm back. Uh, it's been a little while and um, this time around I'm going to be doing a really quick review. I haven't done a review in a really long time, but I picked up this uh, G.I. Joe Ghost Talk 2 vehicle today uh, and after opening it up and messing around with it, I just thought, man, this thing is neat enough. I, I think I need to do a quick review. Uh, and I had the time to do it, so uh, eh, what the heck, why not? So, um, this is the box. It's a Ghost Hawk 2 from G.I. Joe Retaliation line. And here's the back of the box. So you can see some of its features. It's got a deploy and descend uh, um, hatch with a, a repelling line. It's got uh, two VTOL vertical takeoff and landing uh, engines on the wing. Uh, it's got some firing missiles. Uh, the canopy opens. Um, it comes with a crappy figure with five POAs, which hopefully that'll never ever happen again with G.I. Joe's. And that's the box. It's a pretty cool box. Uh, yeah, right. Retaliation packaging is okay. Um, obviously, we'd like uh, to see better figures with our vehicles. Um, when I picked this up, it's, it's the same price as the His Tank and the Ninja Combat Cruiser. Same price. Uh, I was surprised that the, the box is kind of hefty, um, so that led me to believe, well, it must be, you know, lots of parts or something like that. Um, the bo the package, I mean, not the package, the directions were actually pretty simple. It was only uh, five steps to really build the vehicle here, and then down here, put on the missiles. Missiles took almost as long as it took to build the vehicle. Snapped together really well. And then, obviously, uh, back here, it shows you where all the stickers go, which I haven't put the stickers on yet. Uh, I'm kind of excited to put the stickers on because they look really cool, actually. There's a neat little uh, wolf-looking guy here. There's a clover. It's just some interesting things. I like the, the, the these decals over here, the little caution decals and things. So I'm thinking it's going to look pretty cool once the... Uh, once the stickers are on it, I was a little disappointed to see this sticker sheet bent, whereas you can see that it's big enough to fit inside the box without being bent, but what they did was, instead of putting it in the cardboard insert, they stuck it in between, and whoever packed this box uh, just kind of shoved it down in there, and it, and, and it got uh, bent, but I'm sure the stickers will look fine once they're on the vehicle. Okay, so here's the vehicle. Sorry, my desk is a mess. I've got a whole bunch of work in progress figures, customs that I'm working on. Um, and you can see this thing is pretty big. Uh, if I get a, a vintage uh, AG, AGP anti-gravity pod, you can kind of get an idea about how big it is. There. Here's a shell of a vamp. So it is a good what is this Bravo vehicle sized vehicle it's pretty big I mean I'm it's it's if I compare it to the Tomahawk right there which I need to do a review on the Tomahawk maybe I'll do that one next I've already got it hung up but uh, I should do one on that um, it's pretty it's about the same size as the Tomahawk if you do not count the uh, span of the rotors all right, so you can see all the missiles here. These missiles here, they're kind of like double. They shoot if you press this, but I'm not going to do that because my room is kind of messy and I don't feel like fishing for it. Um, but trust me, they shoot. They feel like they shoot pretty far because the spring was pretty well tensioned when I stuck them in there. And they're not one of those missiles that if you breathe on them, they shoot out. It, it, it's pretty good. I've got this in vertical takeoff mode. The wings do pivot very easily. There's a nice little clicking noise. Um, nice and strong. The canopy, the interior of the cockpit is okay. It's it's a little lame. The sculpting is kind of... I don't know how well you can see it. It's not very well sculpted inside there, but it's okay. It, it passes. Um, here's the crappy figure. And I thought that this was a removable helmet with a duke head, but it's just a nubbed. We set him down. One thing that I thought was cool about this video, um, was I mean this vehicle, was that it's got the little refueling thing right here. 
so that it, the ghost hawk can fly and catch up to maybe like a C-130 or refueling, whatever those jets are that refuel fighters and stuff in midair. Bunch of missiles and some bombs here on the bottom. Um, even though it's kind of lame inside the cockpit, the, I really like the way that this canopy and the nose of it look. I, I really like that. I think it looks neat. And I'm sure once I get the stickers on, it's going to look even better. I also like the tail. And then, let me see if I can do this here. You can see right here is where the hatch is. And there's a little string that allows you to repel. And if I put it down, I can open it up. And I've already stuck a figure inside there. So you can see. And if I pull him, which I can't do because I only have two hands, he'll come down. There's a little string back here. And there's a little peg right there. And you kind of just wrap the string on. And then that little thing right there hooks on to hold it taut while the figure is inside. So that's kind of a cool figure a feature. I, I, I kind of like that. Some handlebars down here. Um, figures really can't hold on to them though because they're a little too thick and the only criticism that I have about this vehicle is obviously well there's a couple criticisms um, the first thing is the orange bombs and missiles I mean come on it's not the 90s I mean the vehicles painted in this really nice military color you know drab green basically give us some black missiles or some white missiles or some gray missiles or something um, hopefully there'll be some caster out there that'll get a hold of these and mold them and cast them in different colors for you to replace with I don't mind them that much uh, but they are kind of lame uh, and they're also you know they got a lot of cavities in them they're not like solid so you know that's kind of noticeable the other thing is you can see this thing is really wobbly like you know look at that this that's that's kind of lame if I just take it and I set it down well it didn't do it that time but like you know it has a tendency to wobble you know it doesn't sit you know on the on the table in a landing position in a roll it's because these things are so heavy that it wobbles like that see there it goes just touch it and it falls over see it won't even sit back upright really easily but that's really minor it looks awesome um, I'm gonna hang it up probably next to the tomahawk uh, in my little air display that I've got going on here there's Captain America there's a sky striker there's Captain America's parachuting there's a ghost hawk one I guess uh, Rise of Cobra Night Raven, there's all my paratroopers, there's uh, Python Conquest Adats in the air battle there, Firebat, regular Conquest, there's a vintage, um, you know, it's kind of hard to see, I don't have very good lighting in here anymore, uh, vintage uh, Dragonfly with a vintage, or a 25th vamp hanging from it, Tiger Rat, Shark, and there's all my Cobra Forces and my Joe Forces, and there you go. So I'm going to probably hang it up in there, and um, yeah, it's a good little vehicle. You should uh, buy this. It's definitely worth the price. It was uh, $21.99 at Toys R Us today. So that's going to do it from Lucas Clones. Until next time, see you guys later. Bye.